Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to go over the procedure for turning these IDE ribbing cables into their sleeved variant. Now the reason to do this is twofold. One is it makes routing inside the case very easy. It's much easier to route a rounded or sleeved cable than it is to route this ribbon cable which can twist and be a nuisance. 80% of this purpose is aesthetic. I'm going to be building some retro computers in the future of this channel, and I'd like to use the sleeved ribbon cables when I do so. The other 20% is that sleeved cables take up less space inside the rig and allow for better airflow. I won't have to worry about temperatures too much in my future builds because none of the components I'll be using are large generators of heat, but it will still be nice for air to move through unimpeded. This is a 40 wire IDE cable and this is an 80 wire cable. We're going to go over turning a cable like this into something like this. It's a bit more difficult to do with an 80 wire due to the much smaller wires, but it is possible. I'll be using a 40 wire cable for this video, but you can also do this with an 80 wire cable. The things you'll need for this project are your ribbon cable. You will also need some sheathing. This is one inch nylon. You will need a razor blade or a utility knife, electrical tape, a pair of scissors, and a lighter. With these components, we're going to put together a sleeved ribbon cable. The first thing to do is to separate the wires in this part of the cable. However, we don't need to separate all 40 wires, but only every 4 or 5. That will leave us with between 8 and 10 strips of wires. We will take our razor blade and poke it through the space between the wires, making a slit about 1 inch in size every 4 or 5 wires. Now that we have some slits cut, we can put the razor blade or knife away. We now want to separate each set of wires from each other along the length of the cable between the two black connectors, leaving about an inch unseparated near each end. I found that pulling the wires apart to the left and right often caused the jacket or casing around the bare wire to split and expose it. We don't want to do this. In order to separate them safely without exposing the bare wire, I found that pulling them apart in a push-pull fashion caused them to separate without exposing the wires inside. With both hands gripping two sets of wires, pull on one side while pushing on the other. Repeat this method for all sets of wires. I like to separate all sets about halfway down the cable first, and then repeating until the entire length is separated, leaving an inch at both ends unseparated. When you're done, you'll have a spaghetti mess of a cable in front of you. The next step is the sheathing. Take a length of your sheathing and measure a piece that is longer than the distance between the two connectors of the cable, about an inch longer on each side. When you have that, take your scissors and cut that length of sheathing. This type of sheathing expands when it is made shorter, and the ends will fray and separate, making it messy and difficult to work with. A trick to avoid this is to take a lighter or directed heat source and briefly heat the ends when they are at rest. This will cause the nylon threads to melt together and keep them from fraying out while working. With our sheathing prepared, we need to get it around the cable between the two connector ends. The way we do this is to take the connector end and fold it 90 degrees so that its length is parallel to the cable. We then take the sheathing, expand it a bit, and then insert the cable into it. Continue to work the cable through the sheathing until the connector end comes out the other side. With the sheathing on the cable, pinch it around the cable about an inch from the end and fold the end over itself so that it leaves a rounded end near the connector. Repeat this on both ends of the sheathing.
Next, use electrical tape and tape over the folded back parts of the sheathing covering all the frayed ends. That is how you can sheath ribbon cables. The same procedure will work for the other section of the same cable if you so choose. Instead of electrical tape, you could use some appropriately sized heat shrink to cover up the frayed ends of the sheathing. You simply need to fit them over the connector end the same way you did with the sheathing itself. I'd suggest fitting both pieces of heat shrink you'd need over the same connector end instead of attempting to fit it on from both ends of the cable. I'll admit that this doesn't look the prettiest, but for my purposes, it is more than sufficient. I now have two sleeved ribbon cables, a 40 wire and an 80 wire for future use. I'm going to do some more after this video so that I have several for future videos. I hope this video was of some help to you, or at the very least was mildly entertaining. Thank you for watching.